Here's a quick demo of how to use the Game Master's Apprentice deck to create an entire story from scratch. Starting with absolutely nothing in mind leaves us open to use any combination of ideas we come up with, but keep in mind that if you want to pick a genre and type of story beforehand, you can do that too. There's no wrong way to use the deck when creating a story, but my favorite so far is to start by drawing three cards to generate an inciting incident. With all three in front of you, look at the catalysts and locations and pick one of each, even if they're on the same card. Any combination that appeals to you is good, and keep in mind that you can put your own twist on it to determine what it really means, because we're just looking for inspiration here. Looking at these three cards, I have to admit that I really like the combination Locked In with a Beast in a Creepy Wax Museum, but in this case, I think let's go with Witness a Crime on a Speeding Train. They're very different kinds of stories, but both sound awesome, and I'm a big fan of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express, so that one sounds good. But now that we know a crime took place, we need to know a little bit more detail about what really happened. So let's draw a card and look at some of the sensory imagery. I like to use that in this kind of situation to suggest further detail. Normally when I draw a card for something like this, I just use one of the sensory snippets available, but looking at this particular card, in this particular situation, I just have to use all of these. It's just so fitting. Clearly, somebody has been attacked. Even the belongings on this card suggest violence, but the headache part makes me think that someone was knocked out, not killed. Classic detective fiction I have read makes me think, hmm, maybe someone on the train was attacked and possibly robbed, but is now unconscious and cannot explain what happened. That seems reasonable, so let's draw three cards and learn a little bit more about this NPC victim of ours. So here we have Tracy, who is merciful but fraudulent, and is carrying something collectible. So far this seems to work out, since the dealer in counterfeit collectibles could certainly have a few enemies, but the only way we'd know about the fraud is if the collectibles we find on Tracy's unconscious body are obviously forgeries. How about two copies of a one-of-the-kind coin? But then on top of that, how do we know that Tracy is a merciful sort of fellow? I think the options really boil down to either someone else in the train knowing him, or a letter, email, or text message found on his person. I give it even odds and draw a card for yes-no, asking the question, did we find this out from ambiguous texts on his phone? Interestingly, this card not only gives us a yes answer, but a critical yes. Critical responses in all caps and with exclamation marks exaggerate the results. This means that we definitely found that information on his phone, and are likely to find even more if we get the chance to examine it further. So there's the start to our story, and we've already got our first clue. On a long distance, no stops train ride, that just feels right, the main characters hear someone attacked, but arrive only in time to scare off the assailant and assist the injured Tracy, who appears to have had on this person some counterfeit collectible coins and text messages indicating that they were, perhaps, having second thoughts about cheating people. Depending on whether or not the main characters are amateurs or professionals, and whether or not there is anyone of authority around to take charge, this case could proceed in a number of different ways. In my next video update, I'll demonstrate a few of those possibilities by using the deck to continue the story as a narrative role-playing game with no human game master required. Will Tracy wake up before our train reaches its final stop? Will the attacker try to finish the job? Only time will tell.